What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dragon's Dogma. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while. And obviously, we've got our pawns all set up. We're good to go. We've got Flint. We've got, I think, Kinoa. And then we've also got Amaranth, who are rocking it with us. If you didn't watch the previous episode, hey, what's up, pal? We are a vagabond. Oh, there. Been some time, hasn't it? Enough time to become well famous in your case. The Arisen. <laughs> Tis the second coming of Duke Dragon's Bane, I dare say. I like it, friend. I like it well. Now, let us talk of business. You'd be a fool not to have a look at my wares. Are you calling me a fool? Fine, I'm gonna look at your wares, but just because I don't want to validate your claim. I don't know what he's gonna have on him. He may have, like, the traveling... So every now and again, you should take a look at traveling merchants, because they do sometimes have, like, cool stuff that you kind of want. Every now and again, they'll have something. One thing I don't like about this port, though, is I can't use my middle mouse roll scroll thingy to look around in the inventory. I've actually got to, like, click on stuff and go in there. It would be a decent idea to think about maybe equipping your pawn. They come starting with decent equipment. Oh, you got a leather chess guard? I want a leather chess guard. Is that clothing, though? Really, it's clothing. So with the leather chess guard, you can take that, and it's kind of like padding for your other armor then. In medieval times, they used to, like, put multiple layers. So, for example, if you were wearing plate mail, you would have, like, a tunic on, and then over that you would have padded armor. And then over that, you would have, like, some kind of light chain mail. And then over that, you would then have the other. It it was a lot. I might be a little inaccurate. You, got, you want to have some leather belts around your chest? That's how the real gangsters do. So that counts as armor. As does... Oh, I can have a bitchin'-ass shoulder pad? Dude. Oh, this guy is rocking it. Hold on, this guy has good stuff. I want that. Yes, give me armor right now. I want armor like yesterday. And I'm thinking I'll probably put on... I'll lose some armor right there. But the linen shirt looks... I'm sorry. If you've never been here before, I tend to equip my characters based on what looks the coolest. So if that's going to bother you a lot, sorry. I, I tend to go through and I try to pick things based on what looks the most awesome. And then after that, I do the logical thing, which is looking at stats. However, what are breaches? Breaches count as armor, huh? So basically, there's big baggy Aladdin pants with kneecaps on him. Okay. He's got metal greaves, but I think I'm just going to sit here. I don't feel like... Actually, what kind of capes does he have? He has a shoulder cape. No, that one's not... Mm -mm, that one does not complement the shoulders well. Sorry. Not into it. What did he have in here that I could buy? He's got rabbit pelts, snake skins. Not really anything that good that we can't acquire ourselves. So I think I'll probably just finalize what we have right there. Oh, this is going to be my jam. I didn't realize we we're going to get armor this soon in the game. Hell yeah, that mace that we picked up in the previous episode, can't equip it until we change classes later on. So the game works, you see this right here, as you level up you're going to get ranks in your class, and as your ranks get higher you'll be able to come become like more awesome versions of your class, or you can just focus on being a fighter and taking that down to the end. There's merit in doing whatever. I'm probably going to, let's equip that, that'll be my clothing, and then this will be my armor. Oh, we look so badass! We actually have armor now. That's pretty sweet. And so with the ebon cape that we picked up down next to the shore, it looks like it gives us some kind of blindness resist, maybe? I don't know the little symbols. I'd have to look at them at our status display. But it's not actually that good. But what we can do is we can give it to her, possibly? Can she not wear it? Huh. I guess it's a fighter-only item. That's sort of interesting. You can equip your pawns, by the way. If you wanted to equip your pawns, it's perfectly available. So as you pick things up, if you're finding, like, surplus equipment that's no good for your character, definitely put it on your pawn. It'll make them get hired more, too. You saw I hired Flint almost entirely because of his gear. I was like, yeah, I'll just go with him because he's got cool now, gear. Let us talk of business. Let's you not talk about business. Do I have anything to sell to you, though? Like, if I had anything in here that I could get rid of dirt nasty cheap I think I'd be okay with it I don't know what that table does but really it's 7,000 gold for that mace that's interesting I'm gonna sell this plebeian shirt and this hemp shirt the neck wrap I'll probably hold on to ever to ever the neck wrap and then we'll just go like so I think we're in decent shape. I don't really think we have much left. Oh, yeah, we got to go. Okay, so there are things we have to do. We got to go back to town. When we go back to the previous town, 
That should... I think there's ore over here somewhere while we're on the subject. There's also a treasure chest. You know how I told you you should explore... Oh, we got a journal entry. And so instead of listening to Rook run his mouth the entire time now, we'll have Amaranth, who is much easier to listen to. So is there anything back up in here? Anything worth having? No? Well, my, actually, there's something lootable here. Oh, there's greenwareish. Well, I'll take greenwareish. Greenwareish is always appreciated. Seriously, I carry around stupid amounts of greenwareish. It's really, really useful, especially if you're like me and not running a healer right now. You're going to be responsible for your own health, and so you should probably get on that whenever you get damaged. I thought there was ore around here somewhere, just like laying around. Probably should check the houses for anything that's useful. Just don't hit townsfolk. If I give you a piece of advice, just don't smack townsfolk. Something bad, they imply that something bad happens if you're always running around constantly being abusive towards townsfolk. I haven't really triggered it yet, but it seems like it might suck. There's kindling over there. Your, your little guys are going to pick up all kinds of useless shit along the way. What that does mean is that a lot of the time you'll go back to your inventory at your bank or whatever, and you'll have all kinds of stuff in there that's just kind of okay. It's not like amazing. What does that lady want? I think maybe she advances the story. A humbler structure than I. I am Mercedes. I lead the men of the Enlistment Corps. I've heard talk of the Arisen. They say you hold dominion over the pawns. I've ordered pawns to take up swords and fight myself. But they are a clumsy lot. I cannot call them into this world as you do, though, nor make traveling companions of them. What manner of magic lets you command them so? It's a winning personality in 18 and charisma. Well, it matters not. The dragon is come. I'll welcome any help, be it pawn, a reason, farmer, or fishwife. Make use of the encampment as you please. Are you in? Well, come again whenever you tire. Oh yeah, I think if you if you go to sleep right there, I think you don't have a choice. That's for the main storyline, and so she asks you to go to sleep. You go to sleep, and then something happens. Let's go turn in a bunch of our quests first, though. So we can maybe get some extra XP before we go to that challenge. I would like to be at like level 6 or 7 so that I match my pawns before we go too much further in. Now, I don't think a new area has been unlocked. You can go to the Kasardi. Oh yeah, that's for the DLC. So if you've got the Dark Arisen path, they added like a super dungeon to the game, which I think was a really, really good idea. Because while the game did have dungeons, it didn't have super dungeons. Meaning dungeons that just go on forever dungeon crawler style. There's a big dungeon in Casardis that you can go to when you're like level 50 or 60. Technically, we could go there right now. And you could actually, if you can work your way around the monsters, you can loot a bunch of like stuff that's really, really good that'll probably last you for a good chunk of the game. I did it in my last playthrough, but it kind of ruined the fun because I had a bunch of items that were way too good for me. So, I probably won't do that in this playthrough. He more than likely won't go over there for a while. But yeah, down on the dock, there's a ghost that you can talk to. And if you talk to the ghost, she takes you to the expansion area, which is this giant dungeon that just goes on forever. I ran it for about 30 minutes in my previous playthrough, and I was surprised just how large and how confusing it gets. Like, it just branches all over the place, and there's different sections that have different themes, and it's, it's a lot. That being said, though, it's like endgame content. Ah, the venerable Arisen returns. Are you come to lead the pawns in a quest to slay the dragon? Those equivocal husks. Will or nil, the Arisen is always drawn to the dragon, as puppets strung in fate's own thread. Many have come before you eager to stand tall atop the grand capstone of worldly truth that is the dragon. Arrogance. The dragon is ever born anew into the world, and with it too, the Arisen. All Arisen seek out the dragon, but lucky are the few who attain an audience with the beast, while yet they live. <sighs> Ours is a weak, fragile world, and little within it is more frail than man. In yon encampment, they gather up their knights and hired steel. They think to grow their numbers and hunt the dragon. But they shall soon learn their lot will e'er be as prey.
Guy needs to get more sunlight. That or a liver. His coloration did not look right. It looked a little bit sickly. What's up, G? Gives me chills just to think of it. Ah! Uh, I was. I didn't. Uh, I'll make no excuse, cousin. I hid in the well for fear of the dragon. And let me tell you this. You'd be wise to keep your distance from that pit. I was too craven to venture far. A lucky thing. A queer growl echoed back with the sound of water from further in. There's aught down there. Mark my words. I could feel it, I could. You cannot see me going back down there to find out what. What? You mean to go down there? You're a right hero. Here, if you're set on going, take this with you. It should have some use to it left. I'll not soon forget your bravery, cousin. Pray, just come back alive. Alright, so going down in the well. That's actually not a bad early game thing to do. It could be a little rough down there, but you'll probably be fine as long as you have your pawns. Just don't go down there with like one pawn and you should be good. A wounded need medicine, cousin. Pray bring the flowers for the compound quick as you can. The mixture calls for two types of flowers. Speak to the others for more word on that. I ask you this favor because I trust you, good Fisher. I know you'll not leave these people to suffer. So we've got Sunbright. Bam! Oh, brought the rest of them, have you? My thanks, cousin. All that remains is to find some moon glow. A pinch mixed with these will make a fine medicine. I feel more familiar I've with learned what to do. Moon glow! The mixed I... Aye, that's the one! You found it! Moon glow has grown rare in these parts of late. Tis a relief to see it. Good! That's the both of them. In truth, I am surprised to see them got so quickly. I'll get to work directly. With luck, we'll have everyone back to Elthia along. Tis your doing, cousin. I fear there's little I can offer you in thanks. Save this. Pray, take it. Now, to make some medicine. Cute. The reason I would do a lot of these quests is because your pawn comes in at like level 2, so you kind of want your pawn to level up a little bit so she'll be stronger. I don't think you level up other people's pawns though, only your pawn. That should be everything. Oh yeah, I know what it is. It's pointing me at the lady on the docks, but I'm not going to talk to her right now. Let's go down in the well and we'll see if we can get some adventures done there, then we'll head back to the encampment on that opposite side. And from there we should be good to start our free roaming quest throughout the land. Oh. Thought you had to jump down it. I thought it was gonna be an, I thought it was being immersive where I could like jump down the well. I'll take that. These guys in here just looting everything. Yeah, I would suggest we gather up some oil because we're gonna need lanterns. What's this? Alright, so now that we got that, let's get our lantern out. Which I guess I have two of. Could wear two of them. Put one on my head, just on my forehead, and I use it as a weapon, like a flail, and swing it at people. It's like, Arr! watch out for snakes and all kinds of stuff down here. There's some random encounter. Oh, we got some hemp, so that'll be nice. Our afternoon setup. If you'll recall, we had a quest to murder rats, and so I'm gonna try and get that done. I think it was to kill five or six of them. I don't remember exactly though. Maybe it was ten. I think we go back this way first. There's lots of dungeon crawling in this game, and that's actually one of the features that I like about it, is that as you're wandering around... What did I get bit by a snake? Oh, there's a snake right there. You see him? Can't drop any loot, neither. I guess I got bit by a snake. Unfortunate! Been on an adventure for like 12 minutes, and I already got bit by a snake. Story of my life. I had to watch out for those things when I was a kid. I don't see snakes nearly as much as I did when I was younger. Like, when I was a kid, there was rattlesnakes everywhere. Nowadays, I don't see rattlesnakes nowhere. Did they loot a chest without me telling them to do so? You little rats. Sometimes your pawns will occasionally... They will act out of accordance with your desires. Oh, yeah, we're poisoned. I should probably fix that, huh? 
I can purge. Oh, we've got one Mithridati. I thought I had more than that, so that's unfortunate. We'll have to be careful about our Mithridati use then. And also about snakes. Keep an eye out for anything that looks like a stick that's on the ground that's moving. That's the best advice I can give you for snake watching. There's also bats around. They will occasionally dart down from the ceiling to annoy you. Your pawns don't really seem to be bothered by them on the same level that they bother me, but they can actually deal damage, as you can tell from our health bar, which has now been reduced slightly. One of our characters is completely and totally drenched. I don't see any snakes in here. That tends to be what I'm mostly worried about anyways. We do, however, have Harsebud milk up here. And Harsebud milk is basically the exact same thing as greenware. It's just a little better. Oh, there's rats. Gotcha. Stabdominal Steve approaches level 7, which is pretty cool. We pick up some Scrags of Beast, which I usually just vendor them. After I accomplish, like, after I gather up maybe 20 or 30 of them, I'll usually just sell them to make a little bit of extra coin. Got an egg right there. We can use that for sulfur, I think. You can combine items later on in the game. I'm not so good at it. Oh, by the way, if I miss a note on the wall, sorry. Really wish you guys would stop looting shit, but that's fine, I guess. Give me that harsebud milk, though. And that's actually where we... Mm, that's not where we're going right now. If anybody jumps down there, lost to me. Don't jump down there. If you jump down there, I will leave and forget about you. Our adventures... No, this is actually... This seems alright. Is there anything... I don't really want to douse my torch, though. I can't see worth shit in here whenever I douse my torch. Maybe if we jump down in the water over here, there'll be something for us to use. I don't see any chests or anything over there. That? On that side, there's fish. I think as long as our... Yeah, as long as our lantern stays above water, we should be good, but... Chances are that it won't stay above water, so I apologize. There's nothing I can do about this here. Had I a towel? I think it's actually called a cloth. Apparently, we just beat something up and stole its nut. Got harsebud milk right there. Looks like the cavern leads this way. The driplets from above can get you wet too and ruin your torch, just in case you were wondering about that as well. I think you get a waterproof one later or something like that, but I can't I can't 100% promise that's how it works. I'll take that. Yeah, I don't think I'm in the mood to carry around a bunch of rocks with me. You'll forgive me, my eyeball is super itchy right now, and so I have got to itch it. To go What's in here? Harsebud milk? I'll take it. It's not that useful, but it'll be useful when we require it. So it looks like we'll be able to gain a little bit of elevation right here. Have to jump our way across to where? Oh, that actually connects. Okay, I know where we are. That connected down to there, so that's pretty cool. We should dry off in just a minute, and then our torch should turn back on, but it takes time. I don't think we have a cloth or anything like that with us. It should be under curative items, I think. Or maybe it's under materials. Yeah, we can't use that. So there's a thing called cloth, and you can use it to dry yourself off. You see those things laying in the water down there? They're about as threatening as you would assume they are. So take this slow. Apparently they're taking like a little bath or something. Sometimes your characters will do dumb shit. Now these are called ichthians, and you want to approach them from behind and chop off their tails. If you can chop off their tails without getting whooped on like Amaranth just did, we'll pick her back up. They lose a lot of their they lose a lot of their spunk and their pep if you can cut the tails off. So I would highly recommend you go in on the tails if at all manageable. However, if it's not, then just be sure to block and don't tank things with your face like Amaranth did. It's a risky proposition. Your characters are gonna die, so don't like lose your shit whenever they go down. It happens. They're gonna die a lot. They do dumb stuff sometimes. They don't really move out of AoEs or anything like that. Think of them, hey, our vocation rank went up. That's good, just in case I wanted to vocate better. I'm gonna leave them to fight for a second because I don't want them to pick up all this loot. There's poison sacks. There should be Ichthian scales and a couple of other things over here. 
that'll make our lives a bit easier. They can handle the fight anyways. We've got Baleful Nails. Those are actually pretty expensive, and we got some purple anuses down here too. So just in case you wanted to have a purple anus, stop squeezing because we've accomplished it. We got a rock. Sorry guys, I'm just mining. Don't worry about me. Oh, what have you guys done? What have you guys done? All right, we're going over the top. Here we go. One up, one up. Apparently, I got dribbled on, so when you get dribbled on, it has this tendency to put out your lantern. There we go. Another tail off. I'm going to keep working on tails over here. He needs to keep spamming that lightning out. That lightning is getting shit done. There goes another one. One thing I do like is when you go to blacksmiths and when you go to the upgrading places in this game, the inventory is universal, and so it'll actually draw stuff from your bank, too, so you don't have to carry around a bunch of bullshit. So it's in your best interest to drop gear as often as possible inside the inn if you're not going to be using it anytime soon. The Saurian tail will be useful. I was hoping we get some Saurians. Are they called Ichthians or Saurians? I guess they're called Saurians. Must have my game mixed up with another game. They should be able to handle him, no problem, I think. And so now we got to report back to Paul. Amaranth has gone up to level 7. It's always good to do these little quests at the start of the game. Because they do help. They absolutely do. I think there's, like, treasure and shit back in here. It might be a wise idea. God, I can't see it all. This is bad. But they put treasure in these dark little areas, too. If only I had one of those candles that, like, goes on your head with medieval miners, where they would wear, like, a candle on their forehead or whatever. Yep, you know take candle. That'd work. Apparently, we got a small fish out of there. I think we can loot this, too. So we got a throw blast from there. And a purple anise. Getting paid? Getting paid is definitely the most fun part of the adventure. How are you dead, man? What did you do? <laughs> ah, I stubbed my toe! His HP so low that that's all that it took. Stubbed his toe and down he went. Dark little room over here, which may contain some kind of treasure. Maybe. Oh, there's snakes. I do not support snaking of any kind in my vicinity. I will never understand people with pet snakes. It's like, why? I had a girlfriend who always had snakes. And, like, she was always trying to tell me they had personalities and shit. And I was like, really? Because it looks like they've been sitting in the same spot underneath the heat lamp for, like, the last three years just chilling. I'm pretty sure if you don't feed them, they're going to bite you. Like, I'm 80% sure. Coin purse right there. Our lantern should come back on at any moment. I think there's a treasure room right here. And also a spider room. Spider room, spider room. They'll bite you and spell your doom. They are lame. They use their webs to wrap up your tiny head. Watch out. It is a spider room. I do want the hard spud milk. We just got paid, so that's pretty good. And then we'll get paid on the opposite end of the quest, too. So we're up to almost 20,000 G. It's not that much. Don't get excited about it. You actually, some of the more expensive stuff in the game costs like 200, 300, 400,000 gold, so it takes a pretty good stack in order to get you there. Looks like those are just apples or, I don't know, papayas or something. I don't really have any idea. We killed off a bunch of spiders, though. I don't know if that was enough to complete our quest. I was hoping it would be because you don't see spiders super frequently. You see them every now and again, but they're not like major players. Got 100 right there. I mean, maybe my spider isn't. Your spider might be a player. Like, there you go, dog. I'm a player. A spider player. Hangs out with black widows. Keeps on living. What a player. He's a baller. And this should spit us out, if you recall. Alongside the trail, if you look back that way, it'll take us to Casardis. And if you look over there, we'll have the stockade or whatever. And it's just slightly up that trail right there. There's also a bunch of treasure that's up on the hills. If you wanted to go up on there, if you just run around for a little bit, there's some decent stuff up there. It's not, like, incredibly amazing, but it's all right. Let's truck on back. Actually, no, we got to go back and get paid, don't we? 
Let's go back and get paid for our quest. That'll also give us a nice little dollop of XP. Hopefully bump us up to like level 8 or level 9. Our stamina is going to be a little bit affected right now because we're at an average load. Most of the time I prefer... Oh, we got greenware-ish over here. Give me that greenware-ish. Oh, that's Nightcry. Never mind. I'm no longer excited. Nightcry, you disappoint me with your existence. Treasure chest over here with some pickled mushrooms. It's not a bad plan to walk along cliff faces like this and look downwards in the hopes that maybe you'll see treasure chests or something on little ledges. It happens more frequently than not. I'll just throw that out there in case you were wondering. So there's a beach right there. It also sort of looks like you might be able to drop down over there. Might be able to wrangle yourself a couple of Seekers coins. No, don't fall off the cliff. Oh, God. That almost went really badly. That would have been the worst. We would have learned aught about gravity. Which at this time is really sort of a murky study. Not a lot of people studying gravity at this point in history. I don't even know what the planet's called in this game, so I suppose that's probably something I should work out. 760 HP. We could definitely do with a higher number right there, too. I'd like to have like 1,000, 1,100, 1,200. I'd feel better about it if we were a little bit higher level still. That fall looks like it'll more than likely be pretty fatal. There's a piece of equipment on a little ledge on one of these little shelves over here. And it's got hide armor inside of it, kind of like a barbarian looking armor that's pretty badass. Like, it's really, really good. And so I should probably go back down there and investigate, see if I can find it. It's on one of those ledges. I just can't recall quite where. It might be on a ledge off that way, though. I think it's over here. Still. I'm trying to stay on task at the moment. We don't have any float stones or whatever. There's things in this game that allow you to teleport around. They're like single-use hearthstones. It's pretty rare that I actually get one of these birds. And unfortunately, since I can't command my little guys to go and murder them, eh, let's leave them as they are for right now. Had I arranged attack, killing the birds would be a lot easier. Sometimes they'll double back and you can jump and hit them, but not super often. Once they gain altitude, you'll probably never get a good swipe in on them. That's why I don't think I took the seagull quest, is because normally it can be a little sketchy to finish with a warrior. He's racing me for the chest right now. I thought we were friends. I thought we were on the same team. You're over here trying to race me for a thousand gold. Inflation's bad in this world, man. That thousand gold is not going to fix all your problems. It might me lord. It may help. Just a little me lord. No, not sea monsters. Those are called seagulls, though. I think you've messed up your terminology. So let's turn in this quest. Then I'll end the episodes. So let's get this thing in here. Ugh. Big old leap right there. His actual horizontal leap is a thing of... It is a thing of note. It's a thing of note. You there, sir. Pay me. They are well and truly slain. I think upon it, twas my hiding in the well what brought the danger to light. I take no credit, mind. I simply feared I'd be blamed for releasing monsters upon the village for having opened up the well. Tis a relief and all you're doing, cuz. Here, I owe you at least this much for all you've done. I shall strive to learn from your example. Commit myself to becoming a soldier fit to defend the land and its people. Honest. You should also get rid of that seashell mustache you got going on. That seashell goatee you got going on. So there's another 1,500 XP and another 2,000 gold. Moving on up, moving on up to the east side. Finally got a piece of the pain. Well, Madeline, this is a fine complete. bit of fortune you've come into. Come to Grand Soren with riches in mind. Instead, find only cravens cowed by dragon fear. The strength. Fie, what to do, what to do. If only there was some hero to aid a poor, unfortunate lass such as I. Oh, I know you. You took up steel and drove the dragon from Cassidus, yes? I heard about that. And of course you know me. I come here now and again to restock my wares. Uh, you do recall me, yes? Madeline, finest peddler in all Grancis? Ravishing beauty of legend and song? Madeline. Well, no matter. I've bigger problems. 
these are dark days, so terrible as to drive even I to the brink of tears. And yet, just when I need the aid of one both clever and strong, you arrive. Truly, fortune means us to partner together, don't you agree? <laughs> Only a fool could mistake the thread of destiny what links us. You will be my savior true, and after me, the world entire. And with that, we must be off. I trust you know of the encampment outside the village. I must travel there with all speed, but the wilds are perilous of late. Would you see me there safely? And there it is. We got our quest set up. So my name is Platter Cat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dragon's Dogma. I will see you in the next episode. Bye, everybody.